Hello, um, this time I'm going to explain the midterm review number four for the pre-curricular standard course. So there are six programs. Uh, number one, the price P in dollars and the quantity X sold of a certain product satisfies the demand equation X is equal to negative six P plus 600. Find the model that expresses the revenue as a function of P. So first of all, the first question is find the model to show, um, to find the revenue. So the revenue can be found as a product of a number of units sold, which is X in this case, multiplied by the price of each item, which is P in this case. So the revenue is X, times p. Now we want to re, uh, express the revenue as a function of p. So I have to replace x by p, but we already know x is negative 6p plus 600. So this is same thing as negative 6p plus 600 times p. So the R is now in function of P. Let's um, rewrite this expression a little bit by factoring out negative six. So it's gonna be negative six P times inside the parentheses gonna be P minus 100. Okay, so now move on to the next part. Now I need to find the maximum revenue. What is the maximum revenue? Well, the revenue is in terms of P and this is a quadratic function. So it's gonna be a parabola. And since this is in factored form and the graphing doesn't take much time. So the revenue becomes zero when P is equal to 100 or when P is equal to zero. And because of the, the leading term is negative, have a negative coefficient, negative six p square. So it's gonna be like um, concave down parabola where the maximum is obtained in the midpoint of these two intercepts, which is 50. So the maximum revenue is the value of the revenue at P is equal to 50, and that is negative six times 50 times 50 minus 100. So it's gonna be 150, mm, zero, zero. Yeah, so the maximum revenue is um, $15,000. The max revenue is $15,000. Okay, that's a max revenue. How many units are sold at that price? How many units? That's basically what the X is when P is 50. So when P is 50, X is using this. Three hundred. So the answer is 600 units are sold at that price to maximize the revenue, okay? Number two, um, so number three through five is all uh, quadratic inequalities. So inequality, we are going to use a graph to uh, see the solution set. For number two, you can factor this one x plus five and x minus two. So let's consider the left-hand side of the expression in terms of y. Um, so the graph gonna be like, have x intercept of negative five and a positive two, and it is a concave upward. Graph looks like this. So the y value is positive when x is less than negative five 
or greater than positive two? So the answer is X is less than the smaller X intercept or X is greater than the larger X intercept. Okay. Number three, um, X squared plus two X plus four is greater than zero. For this one, um, you cannot factor it by integers. So if you want to find where the x-intercept is, to find the x-intercept, you are going to solve the quadratic equation using um, either by completing the square or using a quadratic formula. Um, for this one, I prefer to use the completing the square method, um, but um, you can also use a quadratic formula as well. Now, when you use a quadratic formula, so negative b plus minus square root of b square minus 4ac over 2a. Now, look at the inside the square root part. So this part is negative. So the solution to this equation is non-real, non-real solutions. What does it mean? It means there is there are no x intercept visible. So if you graph y is equal to x squared plus 2x plus 4, it's going to be above the x axis for all the time. So no x intercept. So now, if that's the case, for what value of x, the y value is positive? In this case, y value is greater than zero everywhere, everywhere. So this inequality is true for any x value. So the answer is all real numbers. Okay. Now, if you actually complete the square, it's going to be x plus one square minus one plus four, which is plus three. And this kind of tells you more specifically where the vertex is. So vertex is negative one and three, and the graph looks like this. And it's clear that this is always greater than or equal to three, which is always greater than zero. So you can show um, this inequality is true by graphing, completing the square to show this is greater than zero, or show that, um, um, I mean, try to find the x-intercept and show that there is no x-intercept, and then graph like this as well. Okay, number four. Number four is like you have a negative x squared plus four x is greater than or equal to zero. Um, you can factor this one quickly. So it's going to be negative x and x minus 4 is greater than 0. And this is like upside down parabola with x intercept is 0 and 4. And we are trying to find for what value of x it's greater than or equal to 0, so which is basically here. So the answer is any number between 0 and 4. Um, but uh, we actually do not like negative coefficient in front of the leading uh, term because it's kind of make it a bit tricky. So the, another way of thinking this is we write the expression first by multiplying both sides of the inequality by negative one. When you multiply the both sides of the inequality by negatives, it's going to change the direction of the inequality sign. After that, you are going to solve this just like we did it in program number two. We factor it and graph it. And for this one to be great, I mean, less than or equal to zero, x must be between zero and four. Okay, number five. Number five, well, you cannot factor it by integers. So again, we let's use um, 
quadratic formula to find x intercept. So you set that equal to zero and you solve for x. So it's going to be negative b plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac. No, 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 16. So it's going to be 2 uh, plus minus square root of 41. So this is a real number. This is a real number. So we actually have two x intercepts. So the bigger one is a plus square root of 41. And the smaller one is a minus square root of 41. For what value of x? This, is, this y value is less than or equal to 0. It's in between. So the answer is between these two numbers. And the equal is included here. OK. Now, so that's basically everything from chapter three, section four, or section five. Uh, last program here is actually a cubic expression. It's not quadratic. So the graph is not a parabola, but it's more like this kind of graph. And to solve quadratic inequalities, actually explained in chapter four, section five. But the idea is the same. So if you know how to graph this one, uh, the program will be <laughs> basically it's, it's same. So consider the graph of this function. So this is a cubic function with x intercept is 1, 5, and negative 2. And all of them have a multiplicity of 1. So the, the curve is going to cross these three x intercepts. Um, the end behavior is from negative infinity to positive infinity. So the graph is going to look like this. Yeah, it's a cubic. So it have at most two turns, turning points. So for what value of x, the y value is less than or equal to 0. So it's become less than or equal to 0 at here and here. You're looking at third quadrant and fourth quadrant. So from the, from the graph, the answer is x is less than or equal to negative 2, or x is between 1 and 5. Well, so that's conclude everything. Um, good luck with your midterm.